So is jiu-jitsu really dangerous? Really, it depends on what you deem dangerous. Because according to a study of around 2,500 Hawaiian sports, and they were comparing wrestling, MMA, judo, jiu-jitsu was actually found out to be the least dangerous with the least amount of injuries occurring. If you wanna read this specific study, please take a look at my post that I linked down in the description down below. But you have to understand, jiu-jitsu is ground fighting. So majority of your time will be spent on the ground. So this means that the random occurrence of something like judo, where you can boom, flip someone, or wrestling, where majority of time is gonna be spent from standing up to a ground level, this just naturally, just random stuff happens. This is why a lot of injuries happen in wrestling. And then when you include striking with wrestling and you call it MMA, that's why MMA is the most dangerous combat sport. What is going on guys? It's Dylan, AKA the combat sports guy. This channel is gonna have everything combat sports related. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please like and subscribe and comment down below any other questions you want answered. We're gonna do videos every Monday and Friday, okay? back to the video because everything that can happen that can go wrong is more likely to happen just due to striking and grappling being introduced but if you compare it to judo judo a lot of it's from standing up to the ground it's a lot of it's to do with takedowns when jiu-jitsu one of the big problems with it is the fact that jiu-jitsu majority of the time is spent on the ground now i this has its own problems with jiu-jitsu being a self-defense art please take a look at my video in the description to talk about if a wrestler will be a jiu-jitsu fighter. You're not gonna be taking down someone. You're not gonna be leveling changing too often jiu-jitsu. Usually when you're sparring or rolling, as we call it in jiu-jitsu, you're gonna be two guys standing up and then when you get to that ground, then usually the fight will end there. Maybe a guy will stand up, but it doesn't happen too often. And even then in jiu-jitsu, it's quite common in schools to start from the ground. Naturally, this means the risk of injury, the risk of something happening to you is a lot less prominent, it's a lot less common than if you were doing judo or wrestling. Because you, what you have to appreciate with wrestling is these guys are standing up, take the guy down, stand up, take the guy down, stand up, take the guy down. And this produces so much stress on the knees, the joints, and compared to jiu-jitsu, it's relatively benign for your stresses. The most common injuries in jiu-jitsu, again, take a look at my blog in the description where I go into a lot more detail about the most common injuries, but number one is gonna be hands. So the nature of jiu-jitsu, when you're sparring, sparring in jiu-jitsu called rolling, because it looks like two people rolling in a little ball together. So just the very nature of when you're trying to go for a guard pass or when you're trying to take someone down, you can, you know, break your finger, what have you. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen very common, but in the study I'm talking about, it was the most common. And also you have elbow damage, shoulder pain. This is most likely the thing that's gonna happen, but you're not gonna die or get choked out or anything like that. Now, the injury I was speaking about in the beginning was actually happening during drilling. I was just sitting as a noob. I was letting the other guy do whatever he wants and he was putting a lot of pressure on my rib cage. And then I heard a and I thought it was a good crack. You know the ones when you think you have a good crack, but it wasn't a good crack, it was an evil bad crack. And I didn't actually realize my bone was broken because I never broke a bone before. It's only in the day after when I woke up and I felt this stinging pain down my side and I realized, oh my days, I've actually broken a bone. Another injury you might get in Jiu-Jitsu is called cauliflower air. Cauliflower air, you know what I'm talking about. It's the mad wrestling air. People out here looking like they're planets on their ears, you know. So, but it's not exactly gonna damage you too much in comparison to Muay Thai, whatever. But I remember when I was speaking to one of my friends in my gym, and then I was looking at Jiu Jitsu and seeing, okay, you know, I don't think it's as damaging as Muay Thai for your body. And if you wanna know, if you wanna see if Muay Thai is a dangerous sport, take a look at the video that I attached. But I just think generally Jiu Jitsu is relatively benign, it's relatively safe. Now it doesn't mean the more injuries you're gonna get, you could get, you know, sprains and aches. Like if you're doing Jiu Jitsu every day and grappling, you're naturally your joints are gonna be put on a lot of stress. But you're not too common to break a bone, stuff like that. One of the most common injuries you'll get from Jiu Jitsu is called ego injury. So if for example, when you tap out in Jiu Jitsu is when, let's say someone's choking me and I do this, and this means, okay, the fight's over, you've submitted me, you have won. If you're the type of guy or girl who doesn't tap, who, you know, will resist to their last breath, 
obviously you're more likely to get injured. Jiu Jitsu is a lot more dangerous for you. So, and it works the other way. Like if you're, if you're, you know, one of your partners or one of your guys in the gym or girls always beats you and then you find you get them in a bad position and you're like, yes, I'm gonna choke them. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make them feel it. Because of your ego like that, they're more likely to get hurt. So one of the best ways to not get injured in Jiu Jitsu is simply tap early. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you have to work with your partner. You gotta treat your partner like your training buddy, which they are. You know, you're not out here trying to hurt each other. You have to tap early. Another thing is something called staff infection. So in Jiu Jitsu, if you look at what I'm wearing now, I'm wearing a rash guard and my legs would have leggings. This is to reduce skin infection. Staff infection is very, very dangerous. You can actually go crazy by it. It's, it's not a good thing, you know? So that's why in Jiu Jitsu, but in Jiu Jitsu in terms of other martial arts, compared to Muay Thai, whatever, like I said, if you look at my blog, I'll give a lot more information. But in comparison to other martial arts, it's probably relatively benign, relatively safe in comparison to boxing, MMA, and any other sort of combat sport. Does it mean you won't get injured? Because you definitely will probably have a niggling injury. But whether or not it's dangerous, whether or not anyone's ever died, I don't really think so. In my, in my post, I talk about a Brazilian who died after getting, you know, when someone had him in a rare naked choke. But that was more to do with the malpractice from the hospital than it was from Jiu Jitsu itself. So the quick summary, Jiu Jitsu is a lot less dangerous, a lot, injuries are a lot less common than Judo, boxing, wrestling, and especially MMA. So again, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. As you can see in my very, very small channel, and this is Dylan from Combat Sports Guy, signing out. Peace.